time for the word, yes, which will be coming from our very own Apostle Mitchell. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. It is definitely time for the word. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so go ahead and get your Bibles in your hands. And this is my Bible. Yeah, yeah. Lift them up on this morning as we get ready to go forward with our Bible declaration. Amen. Let us declare. This is my Bible. This is my sword. My sword. My instructions for life. My instructions. Jesus Christ our Lord. I will. I shall hear it. Receive it. And apply it. And obey. Obey. Share it with others. Share it. Don't, don't know the way. Don't know the way. My heart is open. My so heart is open. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Speak to me, Lord. Speak to me. Speak to me. In Jesus' name. Jesus. I'll never be the same. I will speak to me, Lord. Hallelujah. You have to be focused on that declaration so that the other folks ain't throw you off. But she was, she was saying it today like she meant it. Amen. It was it was hitting her a little different in her spirit. How many of y'all know sometimes something just hits you a little different in your spirit every now and then? And so, yes, Lord. Father, we just ask that you continue to have your way in this place. You have set everything up today. Yes. From the beginning up until now. For this moment, Lord God, and for yes, that I say thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. Whoa, because you confirm, Lord Jesus. God, yes. what you want to do. Yes, God. So, Father, I thank you. I thank you. Mm. I just ask that you have your way in have this place way. today. In Jesus' name Jesus we pray. Name. Amen. 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 You all may be seated. Uh, I did something different this time because I had to obey the Lord. And so when I was actually just in a time of worship, right, and the Lord just began to speak to him, God will drop certain things in your head. Like the poem that I wrote, to, read to you all that I wrote, I was asleep and God started downloading me. So I just got up, got my phone, because in my, in my sleep, this is, how, this is how God deals with me. I'm sleeping, but I'm getting the lines to the poem. So it's like, get up and start writing. And that's what I did. It was just a matter of moments, you know, that it actually came to me. And so sometimes God will drop something in your spirit while you sleep. He'll drop stuff in my mind while I'm up, while I'm worshiping, whatever the case may be. And so the other day when I was in a state of worship, the Lord impressed upon my spirit for me to minister a word that I ministered before. How many of y'all know I don't do that often? It's never been a word that's been ministered here, but I heard the Lord so clear about this word that he wanted me to minister. And that was a word that I ministered October the 28th in the year of 2017. Again, it wasn't at this church. Those of y'all that know me, I have notebooks and, and, and I keep all my messages in notebooks and I have containers that I store them in. After I finish a notebook, I store them in there. It's amazing because when God spoke that to me, I didn't have a clue as to when I ministered it. I know where I was when I ministered it, but I didn't know when it was. So then I proceed to go on a journey. And how many of y'all know it was the first notebook I looked in? It was the first notebook that I actually looked in. It's amazing. And so, again, I immediately began to, to search for the message. And uh, like I said, it was easy access. And when I ministered the word originally, it was a message to women. But God said he wanted me to minister it today. And so you all know me. Even if I minister another word, it ain't going to be the same word. Even when you think about it, I don't have a notebook because I have the notebook that it was in. But whenever I do something, it's almost like I got to do it again. So I did something different that I never do. I typed up my message. Oh. <laughs> Don't get excited, other folks. It was just today. <laughs> no, but the thing is, I actually typed it up, and I never do that. Amen? I normally handwrite all my stuff, but I typed it up today. So I pray that you are going to be blessed by this particular teaching. And so God has been having me in a vein of dealing with medical stuff. Just two weeks ago, I ministered at a conference 
And the Lord had me to deal with the spiritual cataracts that individuals are dealing with in the body of Christ. And in order for me to deliver that word as precise as I did, I had to actually go and study about cataracts, the causes of cataracts and how you rectify cataracts. So I had to do some studying in the medical field. So these had me in a medical vein for a moment. And so there's a, there's a message that, you know, the spiritual cataracts came and there's another message that's been brewing in my spirit. I, I shared with Chris this week uh, 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 that this particular message is brewing in my spirit. And I was like, you know, just telling them a couple of things about it. I said, but it's going to be good when, it, when it's time to release it. And that message is triple bypass. Mm. But guess what? The Lord said, not today. I don't want you to do that today. I want you to deal with this message first okay. before you tap into the triple bypass. Because okay. there's a building process that God is doing right now. Okay. Even as he's preparing us for the fast that we're getting ready to do to release and break some stuff, God is being very strategic. Because even as I've been seeking the Lord about the, 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 the fast, and individuals have been asking me, so when is the fast going to start? I can't tell you until God tells me. I can't tell you until God tells me. And, and I'm getting instructions from him. Even when I had you all to, to write the different things that you wanted to, to, to God to move on your behalf for. Amen. Your personal things. I had to hear from God. And then as I began to just even to, to examine the prayers and the, the things. Because he wanted me to do that for a reason. Because it's strategic as I'm going to set stuff up daily for us to do as we are on the fast. Hallelujah. And so even with that, he's been speaking to me saying, there's some things you want to minister before the fast even take place. Because mm. I got to break up some stuff. Mm. I got to break up some stuff in order to shift some stuff. Mm. And so I'm just being led by the Lord. Mm. And so again, a message been brought in my spirit called Triple Bypass, which I thought I was going to teach today. But God pushed that one back because this one needed to be taught. And so this message today is simply entitled SOS. Save our souls an emergency room experience. Amen? SOS. Many of us are familiar with that. And when you think about the word save, save our souls, SOS. Save. It means to make something that is in danger of failing successful. Again, to save means to make something that is in danger of failing successful. It means to stop someone or something from dying or being hurt, damaged, or lost. The word soul, when you look that up in the Bible dictionary, it, it is described as the seat of many emotions and desires. And so when you think about your emotions and your desires, when these two things right here are out of whack, when they are out of control, they can cause us to feel some kind of way and be in need of a, a spiritual trip to the ER when these things are out of whack. And so, but what you got to understand is when these things are out of whack, when anything is out of whack in our lives, amen, we got to remember the word of God that says, beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. See, what we got to understand is that we need to be mindful of the physical state that we're in as well as the spiritual state that we're in. Amen. And so as your apostle, please know that I care about your physical well-being as well as your spiritual well-being. And so does the Lord. Turn your Bibles, if you can, to Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. I want to read this in the New King James Version. Mark Chapter 2, I thank God for those of you all that are tuning in. I uh, pray that you will be blessed by this word that I am releasing on today. SOS, Save Our Souls, an emergency room experience. And as I said, as your apostle, please know that I care about your physical and spiritual well-being. And so does the Lord. And so are you at Mark chapter 2, verse 17? Amen, amen. That's what I want us to look at. Mark chapter 2, verse 17. And it says, when Jesus heard it, he said to them, and this is the part I want you to focus on, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. How many of you know that sin untreated 
can make one sick. If you had sin, whether you believe, whether you are believe it or not, unforgiveness is sin. Mm. Hello. And unforgiveness in your heart can make you sick. It can make you sick in your body. It can make you sick in your mind. But guess what? I don't care what the sin may be. What you have to understand is that sin that is untreated can make one sick. You got to ride with me in the spirit today. Amen. And so when you think about a doctor, you know, sick people often need the assistance of a doctor. And when you think about it, a doctor is a person who is trained and licensed to treat sick and injured people. That is their specialty. They are trained and they are licensed to treat sick people. And so when you enter into a hospital, you can usually identify who works in the hospital in particular fields based on what it is that they actually wear in the medical field, amen? And when you think about it, scrubs are commonly worn by individuals in the hospital, amen? And as you can clearly see today, I came dressed for an emergency room experience. Praise God, amen. See, guess God, what? Jesus. None of y'all in this room are dressed like me today. You gotta understand that I am dressed like this on a reason. You got to understand a doctor is an individual that is trained and licensed to help individuals. Amen? Amen. I am standing here in this position in this house of God with the ability and the training that is necessary to be able to help those that may not be healthy. To be able to help those that may be sick. Amen. And so I wanted you to see me in my gear today because I came ready to do spiritual surgery. I came ready to do spiritual surgery, but the Holy Ghost been working already. He been doing what he is needed to do already in this house. So even when it comes down to everything that she was praying about the doctor and spiritual surgery and cut us open, I was geeking in my spirit. I said, thank you, Lord, because this is exactly what you want to be spoken in this house today. And so, again, individuals in a the hospital, they commonly wear what you see me having on and other type of things, but they're called scrubs, amen? And what I want you to do, turn your Bibles to 1 Peter. 1 Peter <clears throat> chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. And we're going to look at verse 7 and 8. 1 Peter <clears throat> chapter 4. <clears throat> Verse 7 and 8. When I ministered the message in Baltimore, it was called Saving Our Sisters. This is Saving Our Souls. When I ministered in Baltimore, the Lord was strategic as to which scrubs he wanted me to wear. And when I was there, I had scrubs on, and it had a whole bunch of women on it. It was pink, and it had nothing but women. Take a look at the scrubs that I'm wearing today. <laughs> Let me tell you something. When God hit this thing in my spirit, I had to go to the store and go buy this. I didn't have this. It's about being obedient to God. And as I went in the store, I'm praying, and I'm communing with the Father. Father, you show me what scrubs to pick out. And as I was looking through all the different types, he said, this is the one. And if you look at it, what's on it? Hearts, Hearts represent what? Love. 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 Look at the word of God, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7. It says, but the end of all things is at hand. <laughs> the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. You know, when, I, when I'm reading that, what's, what's, what's standing out to me is that the end of some things in your lives, there's going to be an end of some things in the lives of God's people. And that we need to be watchful in our prayers, the things that we take to the Lord as we move forward in our fasting and our praying. <sighs> but the end of things, somebody should be excited about knowing that some of the things are about to come to an end in your life. 
When you think about the things that you may have written down on your particular car, you need to be excited about some things coming to an end. See, this may be talking about things coming to an end as far as the world, different things of that nature and the transition on that aspect. And I'm dealing with you as individuals and in your life. And you should be able to rejoice because, you know, some things are about to come to an end. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent, what, love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins. So even when you think about sins untreated can cause you to be sick. I don't care what your issue may be. You got to understand that love covers a multitude of sins. The love of God is able to deal with anything that we may be struggling with or have ever even encountered. It's all about love. And even when you think about, it talks about having fervent love for one another and the subtitle says serving for God's glory. I need you to understand the love that I have for you all. I need you to understand the love that I have for you. When you know me, amen, you know everything I do concerning anybody in here is because of the love that I have for you. Even if it comes in the form of tough love. Because how many of you know sometimes I will love on you and it will be a little tough. But when you know me and you ask God to show you my heart. You know, everything that I do comes from a place of love. I have absolutely nothing to gain except to be excited about seeing you walking in your freedom and deliverance. And so you have to ask the Lord to show you my heart. And so I'm here today. I'm dressed and I'm prepared to do surgery in the spirit. When you think about surgery, surgery is a medical treatment in which someone's body is cut open so that a doctor can repair, remove, or replace a diseased or damaged part. See, what the Lord has been showing me in the spirit is the disease that's on the inside of God's people. And the reality is it's been there for so long and it's been just spreading like cancer. And sometimes when you realize that you have some cancerous stuff in your body, sometimes they got to cut it open expose it and cut it out and in the spirit that's what I'm here to do to cut you open and to pull out everything that is not like God to cut you open and to deal with all the things that have been keeping you bound that has been causing disease to spread throughout your body in the spirit and so I'm in this vein because an SOS has been sent out into the atmosphere. I love the Lord and I love how he begins to speak and show things. Even when we have been in a vein of dealing with intimacy for a while. One thing you got to understand, until you get rid of some stuff, it's going to always hinder your level to be intimate with God. Some stuff got to go. Some stuff got to go. And so an SOS has been sent out into the atmosphere. And when you think about an SOS, an SOS is a Morse code distress signal. It, is a more, it, it, it ain't sent out when things are nice. And in the spirit, there is an SOS signal that has been released into the atmosphere. And when you think about an SOS, S, O, S, it usually is done with three dots, that, that, that. Three lines, that, 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 then three dots, that, that, that. The three dots represent the S. The lines represent the O. Then you go back to the S. Well, I begin to think about three lines, amen? I begin to th think about that number three. And so when I think about SOS, the distress signal that's been going out into the atmosphere, it makes me think about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that has been crying out to God's people. And then all of a sudden, because he's been putting the SOS out in the atmosphere. He's been putting the SOS out in your spirit. He's been putting the SO out in the messages. He's been putting the SOS out in the atmosphere. But all of a sudden, because of deaf ears, flatline. 
flat line. When you think about a flat line, flat line means to die or fail to increase. Oh, you know that you should be going from glory to glory to glory. You know that you should be here and not there. You know this and you know that. But there's been a flat line of failure to increase. Because you haven't heeded the SOS call that has been going forward from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And too many people are spiritually dying and failing to increase. Thus never ever reaching their full potential. But know this people of God. That the Holy Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are fighting for you. You have flatlined. You are on the table so to say. And you have flatlined. And so they are there with the AED. The Holy Spirit is there with the AED, which is what? His word, amen? They are fighting on, on your behalf, and they are using this instrument to try to get you back in proper alignment. So they are trying to shock your system into functioning properly by using the AED. And as clear is shouted into the atmosphere, they're working. And they got the machine. And they hit you one time. Bam! Clear! Clear their minds. Bam! Clear! Clear their heart of all the blockages. Clear! Clear them from every leech attached to them that's sucking the life out of them. Clear! Clear them from unforgiveness. Clear them from low self-esteem and insecurity. Clear them from the pain of their past. Clear them from disappointment. Clear them from envy, jealousy, and strife. Somebody in this room shout clear. Yeah. Trying to clear some stuff. So these are some of the things that are causing God's people to flatline year after year after year. And how many of y'all know some things must change? But if you know you need to change, but you don't change, you will never change. And so the distress SOS signal has went out into the atmosphere. That's our reason for our emergency room experience today. Let's talk about the emergency room experience. Y'all know that there is a saying that the church is the hospital. And when you think about the church being the hospital, you got different floors in a hospital. You have different positions in a hospital. You know, people that are going through things, they come there to get better. You got some people that work there because their assignment is to help those that need to get better to get better. I think about leaders and staff and things of that nature. Those that's in the ministry that are in position in the hospital working on the board, they're part of the board, but their job is to help those that come through the doors that need help. And when you think about a hospital, every single hospital has what? An emergency room. It has an emergency room, amen? And when you think about the emergency room, the emergency room is an area equipped and staffed for the prompt treatment of acute illnesses, trauma, or other medical emergencies. See, sometimes you are in a place where you won't have time to wait for a doctor's appointment. Because for real, a lot of times, can I tell you what caused us to get to the emergency room? We ignore stuff. We ignore stuff because we think ignoring something is going to cause it to go away. The devil is a liar. But a lot of times because we don't deal with it properly the way we should, it gets worse. And now we got to take that trip to the emergency room. And so the emergency room is a room, an area equipped and staffed for the prompt treatment of acute illness, trauma, or other medical emergencies. How many of you all know that anybody can be treated in the emergency room? Right. You can go to the emergency room with or without insurance. Guess what? They are going to treat you. It's just like in the church. Anyone can be treated with or without a title. Save two years or save 20 years. Because guess what? When you are in need of help, none of that matters. None of that matters. And so 
so when you think about the ER, people end up in the emergency room in different ways. Sometimes they at home and they got to pick up that phone and call dial, and dial 911 and they need the ambulance to come and pick them up and take them to the emergency room. You got some individuals that feel like something is going on in my body, but guess what? I can get myself there myself. So they drive themselves to the emergency room. And how many of y'all know there are sometimes individuals, the only way they're able to get there is by family or friends, amen, their loved ones that actually take them to the emergency room. Just like when we come to church or we end up in somebody's church. How many of y'all know we end up there for different reasons? We're there for different reasons. Some ended up in church because they knew they needed to be here. Something in their spirit knew I needed to be here. When you think about it, you got somebody else that knew you needed to be here. So guess what? They invited you. That's how some of you got here. You think Somebody told you about it and said, I need to take you to a place because I know it can help you. So you are here. It wasn't because you wanted to be here, but somebody knew that you needed to be here and they invited you. And how many of y'all know some people just show up with other people just because? Some people show up for somebody else. And when you show up for somebody else, you come and you discover, guess what? I may have been here to support them or I may have been here to keep their mouth closed, whatever the case may be. But them individuals, they show up and guess what ends up happening? They realize that they too were sick. See, they, 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 they came to support you. But then as God began to peel back the layers, they realize, oh, I'm sick too. And so they realize that they're sick and they need a treatment. And so the key to come into the emergency room or church, because somebody even said this in the midst of everything that was going on. They said, Lord, don't let us leave out of here the way we came in. The key to coming to the emergency room or church is to leave out differently than when you first came in. But we know that's not always the case. So let me ask y'all a question, okay? By show of hands in here, how many of you all have ever been to the emergency room? Raise your hand. For yourself or for somebody else? I mean, okay, so that should be everybody. Amen? Amen. By show of hands, how many of you all like going to the emergency room? Not one hand went up. Ain't that amazing? All right. Raquel, holler out loud. Tell me why you, don't, why you ain't raise your hand. Why you don't like going to the emergency room? The wait. The wait. The wait. Right answer. Because most people that know they need to go there to get what they need to get better, they don't like the process. Ain't no different in the kingdom of God. People don't like the process. They don't like what they got to go through to get better. It's a process, baby. And so when you think about it, most people don't like going to the emergency room because of the long wait to be seen. And how many of y'all know impatient people that go to the emergency room, they sit for a minute, then they get up and they leave. Man, I'm not doing this. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. They leave. They not better. They go home. They don't get better at what they end up doing. Going back. Because can I tell you something? You can leave all day long. You can try to abort the process all day long, but you still gonna have to go through it. And the sad part is, you done got out of your spot. Man, it's like you gotta start all over again. If you would have just been patient through the process, you would have seen yourself getting closer and closer to being seen, but your impatience caused you to get out of position. Then you start all over again. And so, once you arrive at the ER, you check in. Most people go in. They have the desk. You write your name and you check in and you, you sit there and you patiently waiting. You look at the time. And you sit there and you patiently waiting. And for real, can I tell you this? The trip part about the emergency room, this ain't even in my lesson. This is just the Holy Ghost. But the trip part about the emergency room is when you check into the emergency room, you're looking at everybody that come in the door after you. You don't know what their issue is, but you got an attitude if they call you, call them back before they call you. 
Well, guess what? That individual may be worse off than you, and they need to be seen now. But that's what we do. Even in the church, we always looking at what somebody else doing, comparing ourselves to somebody else and their process. Baby, mind your business. Deal with your own process. You don't know their issue. There is a confidentiality uh, 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 clause. You don't know their issue. But then if we see somebody go to the back before us, what we do? Uh, excuse me. I've been in here. I've been in here all this time. And I'm trying to figure out. I just see, yeah, four other people. Ma'am, we got you on the list. Sir, we got you on the list. We're going to get to you. And so that, now you with attitude. Mm. Jesus. Bottom line is once you arrive at the ER and you check in, you check in and you wait for your name to be called. And then once you go to the desk, how many of y'all know the infamous question is then asked, why are you here today? What brings you in today? How many of y'all know that calls some people to go into moments of anxiety? It caused them to go into moments of anxiety because some individuals know why they are there, but they are ashamed to say why they are there because their visit is going to expose their behavior. Yeah. I can remember a time and <laughs> there was a famous man who, it was a thing that was out that he had to go to the hospital because he had something in his body that should not have been there, in his rectum. And he had to go, but can you imagine the shame that he felt for his little sexual lust and perversion? <laughs> Is what had him in that position. So can you imagine sitting at the desk, oh, excuse me sir, why are you here? Oh no. <laughs> mm, well, uh, excuse me, I can't hear you sir. You know, cause that, now we go. Now, now when we can only we can only can talk laugh, and now we want to whisper. And some people don't like sitting there because that question is going to be asked, and it's going to be asked, and it's going to expose where they really are. Some individuals go to the doctors, and they know exactly what's wrong with them. It's not necessarily that you know it's exposing a crazy type of behavior, but they know why they're there. They, they, they know how to slice my finger open. Okay, half your fingers hanging off, that's why you're here. That's evident, we can see that. Sometimes we don't have a problem with talking about certain things, but it's some stuff that we don't want to talk about. Amen. And then you have some individuals, when the question is asked, what brings you in today? They don't really know what's wrong. I don't know what's wrong, but I know something ain't right. I haven't been feeling like myself. And so people arrive and they go in for different reasons. And so when you think about it, a lot of times when individuals don't really want to really say what they need or what they really here for or really make it plain, they are ashamed to say it, but I need you to hear me loud and clear. Satan never wants people to really expose what's wrong with them. Amen. He don't want you to expose what you are really going through, what you're really dealing with because he knows that if you expose it you might get delivered he knows you might get delivered that very thing that got you bound that you don't want to talk about that you ashamed about or whatever the case may be he uses that against you but when you expose it there's a power that you take back but as long as you keep your mouth shut, the enemy uses that to keep you in bondage. I want to be free. But you don't want to be real and exposed. What's really going on? But you can sit there at the desk. And one thing about it, you don't have to be honest with what's going on with you for real. And you will never get what you need. You go in there, you'll get a false diagnosis because you done lied about your symptoms. They give you, they'll treat you for one thing when for real, that ain't the real problem, but you're you too ashamed. You don't want to talk about what's really going on with you. So you walk out of there, diagnose wrong. And so, 
Again, Satan never wants people to really expose what's wrong with them because they just might get free from his grip. And so even when I think about the fast, I ask everyone, I say, be honest with what you write down on these prayers because we are going to war. We are believing God for major breakthrough. And I ask everybody, I say, I need you to be honest. But I promise you, as people was writing, even though I said, don't put your name on it. Well, she know my handwriting. <laughs> so I can't really put that out there. So let me put some surface stuff out there. Some individuals know I don't know their handwriting, but they're still afraid to write what it is that they really need. Just behind the fact that they know I'm a sin. The reality of all that thinking will cause you to miss what you need to get. I ask people to be honest. And so I ask everyone to be honest with what they put in the box for a reason. And again, I'm sure some did, while others hesitated, and I'm sure some didn't. When you're not 100, you give Satan power over you. And so the one at the check-in desk at the emergency room, they take all your information, they ask you, what are you here for? But they're not helping you. That's not the one that's going to help you. They're just getting things in line because they got to know who to send you to. They got to know which, which, who, which doctor to call on your behalf. They got to know what to do on your behalf. So the one at the check-in desk takes your information, but they have to put you into the hands of a skilled professional to find out what's really going on besides what you revealed. Because sometimes we can reveal a little bit, but a thorough doctor will be able to sometimes realize that no, there's something else that's going on. And so they put you into the hands of a skilled individual who can find out what's really going on besides what you reveal. And so you get excited, your name been called, and most of us have been to an emergency room, we know it don't end that quick. But when your name get called, you're excited because you just sat out there for like three hours. Lord... How long is this process going to take? Because I mean, I, I, I've been sold out for a week. I mean, I, I've been faithful for a week. I fasted two days. You said pray, I prayed. I mean, how long? But anyway, you've been out there for three hours. And then they finally call you back into the back. You brought into the back and the examination begins. How many of you know when you first walk into the back, they'll never start looking at your body immediately? They want you to have a seat. Now they want to talk. Uh, I'm in pain right now. Okay, I know you're in pain. I know you're going through some stuff, but we got to talk. We got to talk. Because I'm skilled at this. And because I'm skilled at this, I know that as you speak, there are things that I'm going to be able to hear that's going to reveal what's really going on with you. See, you think it's one thing, but God has shown me that it's something else. And so, a series of questions will begin. And I always tell people, if you want to know what's going on with somebody, get them to talk. Get them to talk. Anybody deal with me, anybody deal with me know I ask a thousand questions. Because I know sometimes in order to get to the problem, I got to get to the root. And in order to get to the root, I got to ask a lot of questions and dig deep. You know how it is, like you think about a tree, they got deep roots. You can't just dig on the surface and think you're going to get to the roots. Especially if your mission is to uproot it. You got to dig deep. And a lot of times we're dealing with people's lives and the unforgiveness and the bitterness. Some of y'all mad at people and they dead. They ain't even living no more. But sometimes in order to discover that that's the root of it, you gotta have somebody that's able to dig deep. Because those roots that have grown deep over the years have went down so far that just digging to layer one and layer two, that ain't gonna do it. That ain't gonna do it. You gotta dig deep. And so, you want to know what's going on with a person? Listen to people talk because it reveals a lot. Some of y'all know you've been to the emergency room and, and, and they asked you some questions and immediately from your questions they diagnosed you. 
All right, okay, based off of what you're saying, this is what it is. I'll be back with your discharge papers. You're like, wait a minute. I ain't get an EKG. I ain't get no, you know, you ain't gonna do no type of sonogram. You, you know, okay, they may listen to your heart, check your temperature, but they didn't did it at the front. They do that before you even get to the back. Check your blood pressure, check your temperature. Now you in the presence of the doctor. The doctor ain't wasting their time with all that. I got people in position to deal with that. Now let's deal with what we really need to deal with. And they can have a conversation with you and never even physically examine you. But based off of what you said, guess what? They can release you. They know what's wrong with you. Why? Because they skill to be able to see what's going on with you. And so some individuals go and they have a conversation and a diagnosis is made off of the conversation. But how many of y'all know some people that go to the emergency room, they got to run some tests. Sometimes they do got to run some text on you because they got to get clarity because they hear you, but they need to make sure. Even with me, I can think about when I went. I told them, I knew what the Lord had revealed to me about my clock. They, they are the professionals, let's just say that, because, you know, they're the professionals. I told them what was going on with me because sometimes people know. Now, in that field, they don't want to hear nothing about God and all that other stuff a lot of time. I said, I have a blood clot. That's why I'm here. Oh, so what makes you think you got a blood clot? You go with it? Uh, no. But I know I got a blood clot. And, and the doctor had a little funny attitude. Well, based on you saying that, then I'm going to have to do some tests on you. But from looking at it and touching it, I don't think you have a blood clot. I said, okay. Let's do what we got to do. They searched and they searched. Searched and searched. And immediately when the woman was checking me out, oh, you don't have a blood clot, the devil is a liar. I know what I have. She was like, oh, no, your blood circulating real good. After a while, because <laughs> I'm the specialist, right? <laughs> I said I should have been a doctor for real. After a while, I told the lady, I said, listen, now, you didn't did this for like 40 minutes. I need you to listen to me and follow my instructions. And I told her that. She did what I said. Then it was like, okay, wait a minute. Let me go get the doctor. Because bam. They was able to see it. I know it was there because of what God revealed. But sometimes when you go to the doctor, they have to run tests in order to get clarity as before they can really give you a diagnosis. And then there are some individuals that go to the emergency room. Guess what? They go in, but they don't leave out. Not at that moment. Some individuals, they have to get your room. Because you, you, you I, I can't let you out. Because if I let you out, you bound to just expire, <laughs> explode. You're bound to just destroy yourself. So guess what? I need to watch you overnight. I need to observe you. And so, when you think about it, then there are some individuals that come in and they don't even come through the front door of the emergency room. They go straight on in to the operating room. Because there are some people that show up at the hospital for the emergency part of the hospital, but they have to go into surgery immediately. No matter what, there comes a point in time when you're going to be what? Discharged. You're going to be discharged. However, before you are actually free to go, what do they give you? They give you instructions. Sometimes they give you what? They may give you prescriptions. So before you are actually discharged, you are given instructions and sometimes prescriptions because they have talked to you, they have diagnosed you, they have ran tests on you, and they know what's wrong with you. Now they want to tell you how you can get free. Now they want to tell you how you can really get better. question is, do you really want to be better? But they're going to tell you what you can do to be better. And a good doctor know what they're doing. And a lot of times people want to say, doctors don't know what they don't know. You didn't do what you were supposed to do. And so you leave and you're given instructions. So instructions are detailed information telling how something should be done. Detail. Do this, this, this. A, B, C, D. Well, I'm going to do A and B, but C, that ain't necessary because I'd have tried C before and that didn't work. So guess what? I'm going to skip C and I'm going to go and do D. No, you messed up the process. 
It's like a prophetic word from the Lord. The Lord can speak something prophetically about your life, what it is that he's going to do, and he can give you detailed instructions. And if you don't obey the instructions, you will never see that word come, across, come to pass. You can't do what you want to do. And that's what most people do. That's what most people's mindsets are. They messed up. They need help. But guess what? They want to do what they want to do on their own terms. When you got somebody that is skilled and a professional or something, and they know what you need. And so, instructions are detailed information telling how something should be done. A prescription is an instruction written by a medical practitioner that authorizes a patient to be provided a medicine or treatment. Let me tell you the problem, people of God, where the problem really lies. People go to the ER. People go to church. People go to the pastor. People may go to a counselor. They go to these places to get help, but leave and don't do what's told of them. That's the problem. They don't do what's told of them. And so because they don't do what's told of them, they never see the results that they really want to see. Why go if you're not going to obey? Why read your word if you ain't going to obey? Why acknowledge you hear the spirit if you ain't going to obey? Why seek wise counseling if you're not going to obey? Why? Do you really want to get help? Because you went to the emergency room. Because you know something wrong. The emergency room ain't come to your house. Even a doctor that does doctor visits, they only do doctor visits because you call them. They don't just show up at your house. Are you okay? No, you show up because you know you need help. You connect to the body of Christ because you believe that God can help you. You read your word because you say you believe that there's power in it, but you won't apply. But it clearly says don't just be hearers of the word, but be doers also. And so people go to the ER church, pass the council to get help, but leave and don't do what's told. When you think about it, you're supposed to obey. Obedience is a positive, active response to what a person hears. And disobedience is an unwillingness. I don't want to take no medicine. I got to take the medicine of showing love. That's your prescription. That's your prescription. This is... Take three of these. One in the morning, one at lunchtime, one at night. Your prescription is called L-O-V-E, love. Oh, no. I don't like how that tastes. That make me sick. No, that's the devil that's making you sick. Y'all with me? Disobedience is an unwillingness, and I'm just about finished. It's an unwillingness to comply with the guidance of authority, especially a neglect of God's will. Again, hear me in the spirit. A spiritual physician. That's how I look at myself. I look at myself as a skilled spiritual physician. A spiritual physician. I'm skilled in what it is that I do. And I know what you need to be healthy and what you need to be free. If something is ever beyond my ability to deal with, I know other skilled spiritual physicians that can help you. If, I, if, if I'm a brain surgeon and I'm a heart surgeon, then guess what? I can't fix your bunion. But I can recommend you to a good podiatrist. I ain't afraid to refer anybody to somebody that know how to do something that I don't do. I don't claim to know it all, but y'all better understand. The stuff I know, I know. God ain't send you to a church of deliverance and discipleship for nothing. Deliverance is a mantle that I wear. I know what it takes for people to get delivered from all type of stuff. I, I, I specialize in heart surgery.
and so. But you need to know that no doctor wants to go through an entire evaluation and process with a patient that really doesn't want help. Time is too precious to waste. Don't you know that a doctor can work in the ER and you go to the ER so much? You go to the ER so much, they know you by name. But the problem is when you leave the doctors, you don't do what you're supposed to do. So you don't get better, and so you end up coming back. The doctor see you coming is like, really? Because they ain't gonna listen. They're not gonna do what they're supposed to do. They're not gonna follow the instructions. They're not gonna take the prescription. They're not even gonna feel the prescription. I got a client like that. And I say to her, why do you go to the doctor? Because you got these issues yeah, I went to the doctor, but the doctor told me to do this, and I ain't doing that. Why? Why are you wasting the doctor's time? And yours. And so time is too precious to waste. When you are discharged, and you refuse to do what's been instructed, you will remain sick. And eventually, you will end up back in the ER. This cycle amongst the saints of God that show up to the spiritual hospital on a regular basis must cease. This broken cycle must cease. Hearing, but not doing. Coles in Texas coming from Ezekiel 33, verse 30 through 33, New Living Translation. Coles in Texas. Because as I said, this cycle has to stop of knowing what to do, but not doing. I know I need to change, but if I never change, if I don't change, I will never change. That got to stop because you come and you hear all that you need to change, to have the joy of the Lord, to walk in the peace, to go to your next to experience the abundant life that God has for you. You get it all. Believe about that and do nothing. The cycle has to stop. Ezekiel 33, verse 30 through 33, New Living Translation. Son of man, your people talk about you in their houses and whisper about you at their doors. They say to each other, Come on, let's go hear the prophet tell us what the Lord is saying. Come on, let us come to church and hear the word of the Lord. Come on, let me let me have this conversation or do this or that. Come on, come on. The people, because they're like, that's a good church. You need to come. And we'll tell people, people come. People come and they'll fill the house and sit and listen. But it says, but they say to each other, come on, let us go hear the prophet tell us what the Lord is saying. My thing is God will speak to a person to tell you what you need to do, but do you really want to hear it? So my people come pretending to be sincere and sit before you. They listen to your words, but they have no intention of doing what you say. Their mouths are full of lustful words and their hearts seek only after money. You are very entertaining to them. Uh, Newsflash, this is not the greatest show on earth. I am not a ringmaster here to entertain you. But it says you are very entertaining to them like someone who sings love songs with a beautiful voice or plays fine music on an instrument. They hear what you say. But they don't act on it. But when all these terrible things happen to them, as they certainly will, because a lot of times I can tell people straight up, this is what's going to happen if you don't do this, this, and this. And a lot of times they don't believe me. But because I've been in this thing for a long time, I know. And so... But when all these terrible things happen to them, as they certainly will, they will know a prophet has been amongst them. Y'all will be surprised of the calls that I get from people that, that aren't even a part of this church. 
They come to me for wisdom and guidance, and I may share different things to them, tell them things that they shouldn't do, tell them things that they should do, and they don't listen. They have a good conversation with me. They don't listen, but then years later, they come back and they tell me, you was right. Uh, I knew that when I said it. This is my profession. I knew it when I said it. You just got the revelation. But you got the revelation after going through a whole bunch of unnecessary drama. And so, some things have been evaluated in the spirit and based off the, the common abundant needs in the prayer box, it's time to go under the knife. So I am scheduling a surgical procedure for next Sunday, same time, same back channel, a prescription won't fix what I see. It's time to go under the knife and a triple bypass is necessary. Yes. May God add a good blessing to his holy word. Amen? Amen. Y'all, that was a good word right there, wasn't it? Yeah. Woo! Y'all was over the geek end. Oh my goodness, that was just such a powerful word. Just an on time.